So we start in Maya. We have the character we want to export. Then we go to the Guerrilla menu. And then we select the export project uh, submenu, which will export the, the current project next to the Maya project and open it in, uh, in Guerrilla. And then it exports uh, everything you have in Maya. So we are now going on uh, working the LookDev uh, model. So if we render this model, we can figure out there are no lights uh, in the scene. That's why it's rendering as black. So we are simply going to add uh, a skylight uh, model in our scene. It's composed of a sky and uh, a sun. Uh, but if we render just like that, there won't be any uh, environment. This is because we have to tweak the environment uh, model for uh, this surface, this object. So we select the object, we can see it flowing through the graph. So it's assigned a surface shader. And then we choose the different uh, environment for this model. So the skylight here, and then we can render with uh, with the sun and the sky uh, in, at the same time. So we are going to add now some texture to our model. Our uh, model is composed of several objects. We are going through uh, this nodal graph. They are flowing through the graph and acquire some uh, attributes uh, through uh, the graph. So for instance, we can assign shaders, we can assign lights, we can assign uh, layers to our objects. So for instance, uh, this uh, node here um, assign the surface uh, shader to the objects and several parameters such as specular, metal, uh, subsurface scattering and uh, diffuse, diffuse color and, uh, and such. So we can simply start with changing the diffuse color. We get into the diffuse menu, then double click the diffuse item, change the color, and then we can proceed with render and then you get your model with the specified color. Or we can use uh, a texture color uh, from a file. So we just drag and drop this file from the explorer into the diffuse color um, item. It creates uh, a color entry which is set to a texture, then we can render this and we have the texture uh, on the body. Uh, when we render this, we can figure that the, the arms are not correctly assigned the texture. This is because uh, this texture is actually a UDIM texture. It's composed of several files, um, which each file being uh, a part of the, bo uh, of the body. And uh, we have a number, which is the UDIM name uh, in the model which is now uh, we can replace with person D uh, in Guerrilla and then select uh, the UDIM mode uh, in the texture node. And then if we render, we have all parts being correctly assigned uh, directly within uh, Guerrilla. Uh, so now we are going to assign uh, speculars to our to our model. So the art is to create this uh, this asset. Uh, also painted in Mary uh, some specular textures, some roughness textures. Uh, right now we only have a diffuse color, and we are going to add some uh, specular uh, shiny uh, reflections in the, on the model. So first of all. If we go into uh, the shader, we can find out we have a uh, spec1 tab. So to activate it, we just drive this uh, spec1 parameter on the top of the of the template. And then we can see some, uh, some shiny uh, reflection going on. So we are going to uh, first uh, activate the progressive rendering for faster preview, uh, just like that. And then we are going to change the roughness of, uh, of the specular. So it renders, uh, for instance, here, uh, very glassy reflections. Or if we increase it, uh, we can have some uh, kind of diffuse reflections, uh, just simply like that. Then we can uh, assign some roughness textures, just like we assign the diffuse uh, colors. 
this is a UDIM, so we change the UDIM number to person D and uh, automatically uh, it assigns the, the, the whole uh, texture pack to, uh, to the specular roughness. So in Guerrilla you can uh, render directly uh, using the viewport, just like that, just like we did uh, so far. But you can also use the uh, render view. So to activate it, you just simply press Ctrl R, and it starts the render directly in the render view. You can switch the background to a black or a square, or you can activate the progressive rendering. Uh, we are going to change the, the rendering size of our um, render, current render, so we jump to the project settings in the preferences, then we dial a different uh, value, and press F5, which is a synonym for Control R, and it renders a different size in progressive. So now we are going to uh, apply displacement, so first of all we need to uh, to apply smooth uh, to to smooth the, the the model because right now it's not uh, smooth. So so f to to do that we need um, the attribute node uh, in the render graph. This attribute controls the various uh, parameters, geometrical parameter uh, of the surface. So we first check the smooth in the smooth tab, and the and then we increase the number of subdivision uh, level for the ray tracing. So now our model is rendered uh, with uh, smoothness, with subdivision surfaces, and it's, uh, it's smooth. Now we're going to add the displacement shader to our, uh, to our graph. So we're going to pick the displacement uh, shader from the, from the library and link it to the graph. So it's, it's the displacement it's applying as a displacement shader and we have the amount which is the uh, norm the amount of displacement which is going to be uh, used so we use the displacement map as a, as a UD map as well so we drag and drop it directly into the amount uh, control uh, we have to make sure this is a linear uh, texture we make sure the filter is the B-spline, which is the correct uh, filter for displacement. We change the UDIM number by person D. And then uh, we check the, ray tra the displacement uh, in the ray tracing tab to make sure that the renderer is going to displace the surface. And eventually we change the displacement amount on the surface. For instance, th this value is actually a multiplier of the displacement, and for this shape, it's one. So first of all, when we render the um, the, the, the render, the renderer will um, start uh, displacing the surface. So it may take a little while, but it's caching the geometry, and then we're starting to have some displacement now. So we can now see that we have a nice displacement on the surface. Uh, the next time we're going to re-render, it's going to be faster because the displacement uh, is cached now. So we can turn off the progressive renderer for uh, the final rendering. Okay, now we are going to add some subsurface scattering to our rendering. The first thing you have to know about subsurface scattering is that all objects must be must be uh, double sided. So the simple tweak for that is that we go to our attributes uh, node in the graph, and then uh, we just check double sided uh, on this node. So in uh, in my surface uh, shader, uh, I can see that I have a triple S uh, parameter in the in the shader parameters. 
So basically, this is this parameter to, to tweak uh, if you want to tweak a uh, subsurface scattering. In order to tweak uh, properly my subsurface, I'm going to just make it do it in a, in a separate surface node. So I'm going to rename it uh, triple S. Then I'm going to um, change the, the values uh, for this uh, subsurface node inside, just inside this node. So I increase this to one. And because I want to work properly without speculars uh, for my tests, I just disable or bypass uh, my, uh, my previous surface node. All right, so in progressive rendering, now I have a very fast preview of my uh, subsurface scattering. I can see uh, the, the various uh, uh, displacement uh, features. Um, and I'm going to, uh, to tweak the, the various subsurface parameters. The biggest parameter to tweak is the, uh, the, the width, the, the uh, scattering width. So if I increase that, I can see that the, the light is uh, scattering deeper in the, in, uh, in the model. So the subsurface scattering is composed of uh, three lobes, three Gaussian lobes. Each uh, lobe has a, has a color and uh, has a depth, has a width. So for each lobe, you have these uh, two parameters plus an extra weight, which, uh, which actually disable uh, separately uh, a lobe. So for instance, I can dis uh, disable the, the green lobe here uh, or the blue lobe here and uh, have different uh, feeling for my uh, subsurface scattering. And so now uh, I will re-enable uh, the diffuse color uh, by pressing the U key over uh, the surface shader and then I get, get my uh, diffuse colors back, my diffuse textures back and speculars and so on with uh, the displacement. I pushed uh, before, uh, before this uh, subsurface uh, tweaking, I pushed my images and then I can compare uh, using the, um, the B buffer, I can compare the, the, the previous uh, rendering with the current one. So now we're rendering uh, without the progressive renderer, just to make sure, just to compare the difference with the uh, with the pure diffuse uh, shader. Uh, so we get this nice uh, waxy feeling or uh, skin f skinning f feeling uh, on the on the surface. Uh, in this setup right now, the subsurface scattering is uh, is the same all over the, the, the object. We don't have differences of uh, subsurface scattering. But uh, the artist also painted uh, a subsurface scattering texture. So we're going to use this texture directly in the SSS uh, input. So we're going just, just as before, we're going to drag and drop the texture directly over uh, the SSS control. It shows up as a mask texture, and well, now we change the UDIM as person D. As usual, we change, we make sure that uh, this texture is linear, and we are going back to progressive render to uh, to compare uh, our result with, uh, with the, the diffuse texture. So, obviously, the differences are slightly lower than, than before because this was a huge amount of. Uh, subsurface scattering. Mm, the waxiness. So, um, so here we can render from a different point of view just to, uh, to make sure, or just to control the amount of uh, subsurface scattering that we have directly on our model. So we can pick a, a part of the model which is uh, slightly thinner than the rest 
and then we can see that the light is uh, correctly um, flowing through or uh, scattering through uh, the thin parts of, of the model. So now uh, let's render uh, the full head of the of the model. So we press Control here to render. So we can see that we have some uh, some special objects in the scene, some some strange thing happening, and we figure out that we have an object called lacrimal, uh, which is supposed to be like uh, well tears uh, on the side of the uh, on the border of the eyes. Uh, these objects are flowing through the graph just like any other, any other object of the model. So it gets the subsurface scattering, uh, some attributes. It's, it's displaced as the, uh, exactly the same as the, uh, the object. So we need a special treatment for uh, these objects. So we drag and drop these objects directly uh, from the node list into the render graph. It creates a node, then we assigned um, the glass shader, which is basically uh, simply uh, an, uh, a press preset of the surface shader with uh, some specular and some glass, that is refraction uh, preset. Then we merge it uh, into the main flow using the override mode uh, of the binary uh, operator in the graph. So now our object, uh, our lacrimal object are flowing through the graph uh, using a glass, a glass uh, shader or a glass preset of the shader. So now these objects are uh, correctly rendering with this glass uh, shader. All right, so we've been adding only a few nodes in our graph to set up uh, this asset. It should be now uh, ready for uh, final rendering and approval if needed. In the next video we'll present how we can use this look dev uh, we've developed uh, in a shot for uh, lighting and rendering. Here we are. Okay, thank you and happy rendering with Gernot.